guests on television. Oh yeah, aren't we on? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do a presentation before we get started. We'll do a couple of business stuff. We were in, we were thinking about class business. We were in immersion out in Glacier Bay. And so we broke out of immersion and we said, and Richard Downhower was there. He was like, do we any housekeeping items? Do we got any housekeeping items? And, they were really taking care of us. We had these like nice cabins out there, and, and you know, for him, housekeeping meant like general conducting business type of stuff. <laughs> One of the elders was like, "Well, I need some new pillows." <laughs> 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 so, she took it pretty literally, but they were they really taking care of us. Uh, but yeah, it's a little. Ah, go <laughs> and uh, so we'll take care of some business stuff. We have a, a guest with us in class. There were two guests with us today in class. Uh, and a presentation. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about our class processes. And then we've got a set of narratives to move through. And when we move through those narratives, that's when we'll switch into Klinget. And then we'll, also, we'll just talk about whatever we want to talk about. Oh, I forget. We'll take a break. I gotta go get this crazy card game that Anush Tin gave to me, uh, and I don't know who made it, but we we'll have to solve the mystery. Uh, it's supposed to be a conversation starter for Klingon language. So. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Uh, okay. So without, uh, oh, let me look. Who am I supposed to look? Yeah, well, no, they've got their crazy questions on the card game. <laughs> Everybody online, can you see us? Can you hear us? Video you know, going okay? We need to tilt that. Can you just tilt that camera a little bit so that you can be in it? Yeah. Uh, so we, uh, this is Beth, and she works at the, the library. We've been talking about a project for some time now, um, the StoryCorps project that really looks to capture uh, Alaska Native uh, education and Alaskan education experiences. And so she's going to share some of that information with us. And I think there's some real opportunities for us to engage in this project in a variety of ways, whether we're being interviewed about our educational experience <coughs> or interviewing others, especially some of our elders and some of the, the folks that we work with and we admire who survived Alaskan education. Um, and just to sort of, I think there's a, a whole experience that I think tends to stay within the Native community more often than going outside of the Native community. And a lot of times there's horror stories there's also a lot of things that I think you can see a lot of things that got us to the point that we're at now in terms of education systems that routinely fail Alaska Native people and, Alaska, and education systems that continue to sort of refuse in a lot of ways to allow indigenous forms of knowledge, whether it's language, oratory, art, to be a fully functional part, an equal part of a curriculum. Uh, and so she's going to share some uh, information with us and ideas on how we can involve ourselves. So again, my name is Beth, and I work at the Juneau Public Library, which is your city library, not here at the university, but I also work here at the university as an adjunct uh, faculty member and I teach at communication 
introduction to communication class. Um, and so the project Lance started talking about is a, a national oral history project called StoryCorps. And uh, StoryCorps is a national organization, been around for about 10 years. And they've come to Alaska before, people have come to Alaska before to um, record stories and interviews of people who interview each other. So the idea is that people who know each other can interview each other. And uh, the, the reason this organization started was uh, the founder, he had a cassette tape of his grandmother that he had interviewed her. And at some point, of course, that technology fell behind and he lost the cassette tape, thereby losing the sound of his grandmother's voice. <coughs> And this was very heartbreaking for him. And so he wanted to be able to help people to preserve the sound of people's voices as well as the stories of the families and the people that you love and, and know and be able to pass those on to future generations. And so StoryCorps, in their many different iterations, has um, had offered a grant uh, called StoryCorps at your library. Um, this is the second iteration or year of that. Uh, grant funding, and it's through the American Library Association and StoryCorps, and they funded um, 10 libraries in the nation, and we were one of over 300 that applied for this grant, so we feel really honored to have been awarded the grant and the pro uh, possibility of, of participating in this. So in the grant application, we had to identify a theme that we wanted to use for our community initiated and um, focused story content. And so it was about the time, a little bit after the period of time that I'm sure all of you are aware, when the fourth grade curriculum came up for review in the school district because there were two or more um, different pieces of that curriculum that were questioned as appropriate and um, reflective of true um, experiences of Native people who were in boarding schools. And so that process happened. Um, many people came forward, maybe even some of you, to talk about, or your or relatives or, or people came forward to say that these stories are fictional. They're not written by Alaskan or by Native people. They're not representative. And we want to be able to tell our own stories so our children know the stories of our community and our experiences. And so that we heard in the community. And so that is why we chose to use the theme of Alaska Native Educational Experiences. And I think what Lance was saying is, is, is right in that you know there's an opportunity to share the stories of, of any, any experience that you have of learning or knowing um, or education and uh, allow that to be part of an archive that will be both at the Juno Public Library, if, if people choose to share that, that is, um, and part of the StoryCorps Library, and also the Library of Congress uh, American Folklife Center. <coughs> so this is our little flyer that explains a little bit about the project, if you flip it around. And uh, our goal is to uh, record 40 stories and beyond uh, between by the end of the semester, let's say. Um, in the grant, we were awarded a story kit. So we were given the whole recording equipment. We've got a professional uh, recording device and microphones and we can set up. And we've been doing some of these uh, over the last few months. And we were very honored to have Nora Downar come in with her family one evening. And it was uh, four generations in the room. And it was a very um, interesting evening. Uh, she was there with her daughter, Leonora Florendo, and we with, brought her friend, Linda Bellardi, and um, her daughter, Amelia, and her granddaughter, which would be Nora Downer's great-granddaughter, Sophia. And we were all there sharing, and they were sharing stories. And uh, as part of the programming and things that come after that, um, KTOO helped us uh, edit the interview between Nora and her daughter, Lee. And I think if Lance can play that, we can yeah. just listen to that a little bit so you get a sense of how this <clears throat> project works. So we're going to play it. Uh, those of you online, if you have any <coughs> difficulties hearing it, uh, I included a link just on the right side there on the chat deal. Uh, uh, but we're not going to share the screen. It's, there is an awesome picture of Lee and Nora on there, but we'll just we'll listen. Did you go to school in Douglas? Yes. I went to Douglas School, 
after I was in fourth grade, I think, we got bust over from Juno. I got picked up at the end of the bridge and we were taken over to Douglas. And the school is where the Montessori school is now. That was the government school. These uh, teachers were paranoid. They were afraid that my hair might have bugs. Mm. So they uh, sprayed every one of our hair and clothes with kerosene. And uh, at sixth grade, I dropped out. That was no good for me. You know, it does something for your uh, self-esteem, being a kid and uh, having having somebody spray you because you you might be full of books. Although I didn't have any. I know that you worked as a fish slimer, as a shrimp picker, a crab shaker, because I've done the chambermaid at the bear knot. <laughs> oh, and you did housekeeping for people in the community? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I went from house to house. You taught at Juno High School for a while. You were teaching Clinket. Yes. There was 14 in my class. Two of them were um, non singit mm -hmm. They still come and uh, say hello. through the school teaching and then I got called by the principal and he told me that I am no longer going to teach. That was it. You got your GED before I graduated? I went to GED because uh, working with the high school kids I discovered that I need help. And then you went to college? I majored in anthropology and um, some students asked me what are you going to do with anthropology? Are you going to study yourself? And that's exactly what I did. I worked on my language. People thought of uh, thinking that it's being simple and um, your stepdad down our discovered it's one of the hardest languages he's ever encountered. Mm -hmm. Dick and I have numerous books. I haven't counted lately. <laughs> so that was an edited portion of the, the full interview that they did together and I think it, it's, it's still very representative and captures what was part of the discussion between the two of them that night and it was really interesting because, you know, I, I'd be like, okay, we're going to stop recording now, and I'd stop, and then and then somebody would say something, and then she'd start talking again, and I'd quick turn it back on because everything she said was just very uh, wonderful, and it was very, it was a true honor to be there in that, in that moment. Um, so my real purpose for being here then is just to invite anyone to participate in this project. We have permission to use I have, of course, the story kit, which is completely mobile, so if there is someone who you would want to interview that might not be able to leave the house or is not comfortable coming to a public place to do this, we can take it there as long as there's relatively low ambient noise and table that we can clamp the microphones to. Um, <clears throat> we also can use the recording studio here at the university, which is on the ground floor of the <coughs> library. And we have a wide range of times that we can do this. Other of my coworkers can be there to help with the recording and things. Um, and uh, if, if uh, you want to do it here, I am definitely available um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 to 1 uh, here at the university. Other times, again, we can, we can come up with, but I set aside those times to always make sure I'm available to do that. Um, or we could do it at the library. Our new library will be opening soon, and there's some good study rooms there for setting up as well. Or downtown, we've been using the small meeting room. And so those places work pretty well. So I'm just inviting anyone to participate. Again, like Lance said, either someone you might want to interview and 
have that voice preserved and, and, and there forever, as well as, as the stories being able to be passed down. Um, the process takes about, we schedule about an hour and a half worth of time. Uh, it doesn't always take that much time. The actual interview portion is about 40 to 50 minutes. There's some paperwork <coughs> in the beginning. There's a participant data form to fill out um, and a little sound checking with the mics and things so we make sure we get a good professional quality recording. And then afterwards there's some uh, release forms to determine the, the level of sharing that uh, the people involved would like to do. So one option is that you don't have to share it at all. You can sign what's called a non-release and you get a free CD from StoryCorps and that's the only copy there is and you can choose to do with it as you want. Um, again, if you share it more broadly, uh, it would be um, archived at the Library and at the Library of Congress and at StoryCorps <coughs> and we've been working on having uh, partner agreements with Sea Alaska Heritage Institute and I think here we'll, we'll work to have one at the library here in the, the Cyril George uh, archive as well. So I hope that some of you will be interested in participating and again there's people you want to interview that you don't want to lose that voice. Uh, I encourage you to set that up and we can work with any times and things like that. And I invite your questions if you have any questions about the project. I just want to say I've, I've talked with Nora um, a lot over the years, Nora a lot, and um, so she has a, I don't know if it's part of the rest of the, the recording, but she also has a, um, a fuller story of her experience in school. And, you know how she was, uh, the tutor smacked her hand for speaking the language with a ruler. Um, and uh, how that was horrible, and when she told her father, Willie Marks, about it, um, he took them out of school. And, and that's really a story of Klinka cultural survival during this horrible boarding school era. And the reason why Willie had that, um, that impulse is being a, raised as a traditionalist, um, but he also went to Chamawa boarding school. And it was so bad there, um, they were only in potatoes most of the time and you know they were going hungry and it was just extremely impressive and horrible and so he escaped he got out of the boarding school and he risked his life with um, his brother Peter and then another guy um, getting back to Alaska and uh, there was even some um, maybe Salish or other group um, in Washington that uh, helped that uh, had were hosts of them for a little bit on the trip so they could survive and to get back. Um, but that is that whole background with Willie's Willie's horrible um, experiences and seeing that happen with his own children and protecting them, you know, from what, what's going on um, in the boarding school. So that's a, I think this is a that kind of thing is it's a very important story itself. So I, I, I appreciate you doing this. Um, and I'd also I was remind Reminded listening and think about this, Eileen Wagoner would be a really, really good person to talk to. Um, she's in town. I, I don't know where she's staying. I just know her name. Um, but she talked about staying at the uh, Skagway um, Catholic uh, Catholic boarding school and how they um, she was she was brought in when she was two years old, and of course she she spoke Klinkit. Um and every time she spoke her language, she was given a cold shower, icy cold shower. Um, and she's been wanting to tell her story a lot to the young people. So this is, seemed like the perfect um, <coughs> thing for that. So if there's any way to track it down, I'll, I'll try to, I'll ask around how to reach her. Okay. Eileen Wagoner. Wagoner. Yeah. You might want to yeah, I would. Yeah, I totally would. If I, I mean, if I had the time. I mean, we'll, I'll find the time to do it. Yeah. I, I also wanted to interview Carol Brady. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy already talked to me about that, and I'd be happy to. Yeah. So, That'd be great. I think uh, the Edwardson family would be really interesting as well uh, to get some Haida perspective. So they have talked to Susie. Yeah, and we'll just to get um, I think Susie and her parents would be particularly interesting. Mm -hmm. I think. I think get all three of them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's the nice thing about this studio over here too. Our, we just have two microphones and that was a challenge the night that we had everybody in the room and we had to kind of keep switching and someone would be in the other part of the room and say something and, uh, you know. So uh, we have more microphones. There's three microphones in this studio over here. So that, and it's, it's, it's a little tight quarters, but I think we can set it up so that it would work. Any other questions about the project? Thank you, Ganeshjee, for your time. I appreciate that. And my phone number and everything is on the back of this little flyer if you need to contact me. Yeah. Yeah, and I can give you a list of this. I'm trying to learn the uh, good audio that you have here from my blended class. Yeah, yeah. This is the expert. So <laughs> expert. Thank you guys. Yeah. Cheese. Yes. Cheese. Yes. expert can get enough. Question. Yeah. Shkashnik Danovak Edach. A yotsuku ka. Yotsuku ka. And then whatever they're the expert in can come right before a yotsuku. So uh, let's do a little around the room thing and just think of one thing that you'd like to share before we sort of get started. It could be in Klinkets, it could be in English, it could be in Tutskanyu Ritangi. Uh, to us to do. And while you're thinking of what that thing might be, uh, I just want to make sure that we have lots of opportunities here, everybody to continually share. One of the things that is mystifying to me at times is language production. It seems when we get language learners together, the trend has been a lot more comprehension than language production, and we're just trying to sort of keep an eye on those things. And so uh, I'll bring those cards in. We'll, we'll find other methods to just sort of have things to talk about as well. And so feel free to just jump in at times. It should be a pretty free-flowing type of conversation. It's an upper-level language <coughs> class. And one of the things that we tend to do is model ourselves after other language programs where the model is learn the language, learn the language, and then you get to these upper level classes and it's just communicate in the language. So our goal is just communicating in the language about Clinket Oratory and a wide variety of other subjects that might come up. And then we're, we can certainly do some technical, grammatical, <coughs> structural stuff if we want to, but that's not the primary focus of the class. So uh, we'll just send it around and then when it hits uh, Chashi, then it goes out into the deep ocean of the internet and it comes back. I don't know really a good way to talk about that yet. Kashuk Beu. Right, so we're going to go into the electric net. Um, I don't know, Deki, wherever we're going. And then uh, then we'll come back to the, the other shore of the table here and then, uh, and then we'll move into our content. Uh, by the time we get back to me, we'll figure out about how much time we've got. We'll try to divide it between the stories, probably after a short break. Towards the end of class, we'll divide up the next chunk and talk about strategies for continuing our discussions. Hmm. There's just this funny part in a Willie Marks version of Nazi Chame. Well, there's a couple of funny parts. Yeah. I like this line. I'll just read it, I guess. Um Ach away deep jeet ka do a tea wet at way balloon tiny speed boat balloon slash cross the cook side. The sea lion people were telling that it's when they had to go home. Yeah. And they gave him uh balloon speed boat he was making a play on, um, it was a, a uh, sea lion. Uh -huh. 
And but the thing is that reminded him of a, a motorized rubber raft. <laughs> and you know, makes a lot of sense. This is about the time where he talks about being reprimanded too. Because so. I think he's mixing a lot of English in his stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. He might have been getting in trouble for that. <laughs> Zodiac. Zodiac. Oh, yeah. Zodiac. Zodiac. Echa. Is cheese. I can't really like. Half a year. Uh. Thank you. The beginning, Shugunach, 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 Yogi, flat tire. Uh, 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 gas station. Isn't it Shukwanach? Yeah, that would be Shukwanach. Shukwanach. Yeah, Shukwanach, uh, Ayia, Yogi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Nishana. Right? Achkar Yi. Akar ye hoos kawabwat. Maybe. Shaky. Shaky hoos. Kesushke. Kudak a shatim with tires. Kaskudak go up. Yeah, to suck to make a what to a cook, 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 a Ha 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 that's the yay hire car. Ach, in a cow and meek. Are you sure that's a story? Chess kidding head, ach. Chess kidding head, ach. Was chess duck toot, our ach. Toot. Was. Fart. Duck, duck, cook. Ha 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 Duk tut duk tut ya du ya kach ach ka ya tetsu one kanins ya chadaka asa hekwasaku one nachs away ya shakats sheta ya shakats kasha kach ach we do kawu shakats ya awa ka ya tetsu Cooch, ha, cooch. A yay good gink, Chakuta. A yet a ek watch, ek watch. What's to sugar? What's to catch to sugar? It was. So I was reading about uh, Robert Zubov, 
while I was looking at my story. And I was going to talk about this in my discussion, but I couldn't figure out how to say it and clink it. But just talking about how uh, Peter was the original Adam Bomb. He slapped his tail and flipped fast. Uh -huh. And I thought that was amazing. I was like, Super powerful, guys. <laughs> <laughs> gonna, every time I hang, I'm just going to flip it. That's right. Hit the table. The last one flips over. Flip the camera. 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 Flip the um, I have more of a question. Okay. Um, so when does the cough mode pop up? Uh, the cough yeah. mode pops up for all kinds of things. For sure, it's in all future modes. It's in all hoarded other modes. It's in all of these potential <coughs> modes. And there's this whole list of potentials, like would have, um, wouldn't have, there's no way he or she could. Um, and then it also, there's some forms which, uh, like when you say, like, uh, there's these things, like, they're kills. But I only see those used, like, he was looking for something to eat. Um, and it's interesting because there's also the which is self benefactive. So I was looking for some, something thing, thing, thing for myself. So it could, sometimes it's hard to tell which one is which. Um, although usually from the context we can pull that one out. But there's certain verb modes where you'll see the arialis, the conjugation prefix, and the qa mode. And then you know that it's, it's that one. Okay. Because then kakh um, this is where it says, kakh And they translate it as, this woman was missing kakh so very much. Which that page is that way? Duck hoops. Page hundred. Three. Three hundred five ish. Ah. 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 Too much. And does everybody know what we're talking about when we say the mode? I might have to screen share for a second. So um, this one, uh, always. So what you're getting there is that's the conjugation prefix. And you know that because the CH is popping up on the other side. And so this is what we call a perfective habitual, which means she was missing him every time. Like, yeah. And and so there's there's two forms of repetitive and clinking, basically. There's repetitive and perfective, which means uh, he reads. Right? He just he reads. But if we say like Kakwaz has a book with him everywhere and he's always reading every single time I see him, that's the that's the other type. And so that's the perfective habitual. So the perfective habitual is going to pull the, the conjugation prefix is going to pop up. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's okay. You just have to memorize it. Yeah, you have to know which conjugation prefix goes with the verb. And so yeah. as, we, as we talk about how these verbs function, um, it can get tricky because there's a qa and a qa and a qa, and those are three different things. Sometimes it's not that. Yeah, and then there's a zero. Yeah, yeah, zero. So like you could say, um, oh, to write. Yuchatangi. That's it. That's. Yuchatangi. Yeah, Yuchatangi has a K. Yuchatangi. Yeah. Right. So he's. There's no U. Repetitively. That one's the repetitive <laughs> imperfective. Um, and then if we look for. Wait. 
Okay, so the habitual. Oh, okay, so the that's habitual not, okay. that one would be. Is there, is there a habitual? Um, it might be. I might share. No, there is. Uh, and so you can look this up in, in 575 plus linked verbs. And um, I'll send an email out about other ways to look some of this information up and looking at these verb modes. Uh, an example would probably be to, uh, to write something. Uh, and so when we talk about how to understand a clinket verb, um, for some things that are going on here is usually you're going to get the perfective marker in the beginning of this as well, the perfective habitual. You're going to get um, a perfective marker, you're going to get a conjugation prefix, and you're going to get a ch at the end of it. And so that's what, those are the, the sort of things you're going to get. Like um, for writing, if somebody writes all the time, um, you'll have kushkitch, kuk kushkitch. And then, um, and so getting some of these verb modes as you sort of identify them. The CH at the end tells you that that one's probably not the Q mode. So there's this other thing we call Q mode. It's probably best to pull up an illustration at this point, just because they make things a little more fun. And then I'll show you guys one other document. One second. Let me so yeah, that's pretty neat. You know, like so very much. So more than it, a lot more than it. She already always missed, always felt lonely. Right. So now everybody gets to see. Everybody online can see these awesome mountains. <laughs> and looks like I'll pull something up here. Uh, and we try to balance uh, cultural no film. Okay, sorry. Yeah, the, That's one one place. Or there's hyperbole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, and this is, it was overpowering her every time, right? And so it's just really, yeah. And you find these places that do. Find and they rarely say anything like "plakayana de ichukutsi." Well, <laughs> so they don't. I Because it's not even our probably in this case. That was that it's given us a sense of that genuine grief. Yeah. So here is our verbal structure template from James and Seth. I should probably use one that's not. Yeah. Oh wait. Hey, wait. Hold on. Let me go on with a white background. It just shows up a little better. So this is getting into the technical aspects of the verb. Uh, and we look, when we look at this realm, I try to make them like fun little blocks that you get when you're. I like want to make this block set just because. Um, so these are the different areas where you're going to have things. And so we see this is where the root is. This is where the classifier. Every clinket verb is going to have those two things, right? When you find the root, you look immediately to the left. The classifier should be there. If it's a zero classifier then you, know, you got a little bit of more tricky business as far as determining which one it is. And then we can we move out here. We've got subject markers, ha, tu, e, ye, uh, the zero marker for the third person. And then we move out here. We've got some other business. Here's where the perfective marker is. And then you've got the conjugation prefixes. There's some that go here. Some that go here just depends on which side of the irrealis they go on. The irrealis marks that the verb specifically has not happened. Then we get into a self-benefactive, which is a qa, and then we've got another one, which is qa mode right here. Um, oops. I think maybe that one is just a not oh, that one. Um, anyways, and so the qa mode is a little bit different, and also in this inner conjugation and outer conjugation. So every every verb has a conjugation prefix. The conjugation prefix reveals itself in certain modes, in particular the command form. 
Right? So if you want somebody to eat something, you say ha. And if you want somebody to go to bed, you say nata. If you want them to get up, you say gedam. If you want them to sit down, you say qannu. So those are the four. Zero, na, ga, and qa. I think about these things in terms of motion verbs. These motion verbs are interesting in Klinkit because a motion verb can be any one of those four. It can be any one of them. Other, all other verbs, it's a sign, doesn't really change. Sometimes I hear ga for reaching up and qa for reaching down. Um, but then the, the key to understanding how the conjugation <coughs> prefix kind of functions, the zero conjugation I think has its origin in motion that has a definite stopping point to arrive somewhere, to complete some sort of action. And so that's, you know, ha, eat it. You're going to be done with it at some point. Right? The na doesn't necessarily have an end point. Not to say it never ends, but we're not worried about the end. Just start this process. Go over there, right? I don't care if you make it there. Just head on over there. And so that's sleep, like just go to sleep, you know, because you're not worried about when you're waking up, you're just worrying about getting into that act of sleep. And then ga is upward and ga is downward. Some of them they start to make sense, like the sun shines down. I messed up on that one the other day. I was like, ha kat ye and then Kyokne said, ha kat ye and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Conjugation. So the conjugation will help to reveal some of the other verb modes. We okay? Okay. Uh, I think. Oh, and I just I had one other thing to show you on that screen. Bear with me for a second. So the other thing that I would say is if you're curious about which verb modes. If we look at the, the clinket verbal structure, this little area that we call contraction, this is the front of the verb where things will start to mix with each other and start to change each other. Pre-contraction means they're there and they don't really get contracted like other things. Like ha and ya will become hua, and we'll see things like that go on. Um, so if you think of the whole prefix, especially, and sometimes the suffix, but especially the prefix as like a switchboard with these different things. What you're doing is you're throwing certain switches, and it doesn't always matter what that switch means. You're just trying to enter a combination, say, future form, future form negative, perfective form, so that you're putting the verb into these certain modes, which communicates things. And for clinket, the primary thing that gets communicated is whether the verb has been, whether it's done, whether it happened, whether it's completed, and those are the types of things you're most commonly marking. Um, Zeosh, James Crippen, uh, has given us the his verbal structure handbook, uh, which is brilliant, and I'll put this up on the screen for a second, and then we'll continue our around the world discussions. Uh, and so this you can get from clinkitlanguage.com. Uh, and if you go down, a, one of the things, there's a lot of things that are super <coughs> handy in here. Uh, one of the things that I use quite a bit moving through. Wait, is this it? This isn't it. All right. That is not it. It's one of is it? So we get down into here, and this is starting to show us uh, how to put these certain verb modes together. Uh, and in particular, this page here. So if we're looking for certain prefixes, uh, oops. And then this is telling us the verb mode and what prefix come. Don't make me go insane. And what combinations need to be there. 
and we can talk more about this stuff. We can sort of, uh, but it's really important in terms of uh, elevating your Clinkit language. What we see in the oratory is elevated forms of Clinkit where you're using lots of these different things that are tweaking how the verb works uh, in terms of tying multiple concepts together or just doing a lot of dynamic things with the meaning. Okay. <coughs> The cut way last week, Kana, Kapunikun, Kakiki, that girl. I found it really difficult to come up with questions to just think about the meaning of these stories in Clinket. Mm -hmm. And even trying to uh, articulate a really basic question. I was still having to like look up verbs that I wouldn't know if someone just like spouted that question out. Right. And so, I don't know. That's just kind of a note that that was hard, but it was also a really good exercise trying to think about how to how to have a conversation about the stories that isn't like, oh well, how's the uh, the structure of this verb really crazy and profound in linguistic terms. Um, but that, that's fun, but it's it's just different. Um, and uh, I tried to make a handout and go print it off, but the uh, computer popped up with like a thousand pop-ups when I clicked something, so I just abandoned shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Really fun reading these stories again and the commentary. I love all the commentary in the back. That, that was a helpful place to, to look and try and think about how to pose questions about it, I think. Oh. And another thing that uh, I, uh, I hype up a lot, but I think really worth checking out, is Richard Downhauer's doctoral dissertation. Because I think a lot of the back matter in this is kind of a condensed version. Well, mm -hmm. not for everything. For the talk uh, story especially, this is like a really small condensed version of his expanded, more systematic uh, analysis of that story and his dissertation. It's, it's pretty awesome. The, uh, that's like a good example of, he does the linguistic stuff, but it's also like uh, literary commentary, <coughs> which uh, Maybe just because of my choices of where to study and everything, but I've had more of the linguistic commentary than my literary commentary over the right. last few years, I think. Uh, well, there's a difference. I mean, there's a difference. I mean, to, I mean, just an approach and expertise mm -hmm. and knowledge, I think it's fair to say. Um, <coughs> the, where Richard was at um, with his background in literature um, and um, um, a lot of a lot of the younger people look at it like it kind of thing. So. And I think it's good to to dive into the footnotes and to really look through some of the different things. And you're gonna get content things, or you'll get like commentary on the translation, and you'll get sort of Oh, he's counting in the Cantonese here. Right. And so you're going to get all kinds of, because as you read it, like, oh, this plane is so interesting. <laughs> and, then, and so it's really fun. And then it just sort of, there's this whole thought world that we're going into, right? Especially so much of this stuff was documented in the going back into the 19th um, earlier. And then, uh, and so we look at, and I was talking to Kate the other day about this whole project. And you know, Tom Peters is one of the earlier ones that they they actively went to, to get stories from. And so it was really interesting to talk to her, and to talk to Hoi um, about this. They said they're working on this, and we're going to get to the woman who married Bear in our next class session, I think. And and they said they translated it. And they worked real hard on it, and they like to take it back to the speaker before they published it, uh, which is interesting because with the Raven story book that we're working on, 
it's hard to do that. Most of those speakers are gone. Yeah. But they would go so back to live. Nora and Sanchez. Yeah. Which actually, that's a great thing. I mean, too. I mean, that's a lot. Right. <laughs> and so they would read the story to them. And they read it to Yeshna Wu. And he said, that's a great story. Let me tell you how it ends. You know? And then he says, I haven't has heard a story like that in a long time. They said, this is you. <laughs> so, but they were really just thinking about that, too, just in terms of when, when these storytellers were growing up, they were probably storytellers all over the place. But even as they're growing up, it's narrowing down. And then as we're here now, it's really just a handful of people that could come and deliver content like this. And even then, you might be getting a very light kind of version. You know, I, was, I was at an event recently where there was a speaker they brought in specifically to speak. Clinkett, tell a story and clink it to people so we could talk about the story. And the speaker refused to. And there's only two people here that will understand what I say. And so it was really an interesting moment because I could understand, but I was like, ah, you know, I wanted, I wanted to hear. And so, um, but yeah, and so we'll, we'll, we try to, we'll try to balance content, culture, linguistics, our own perspective on this. I think that's I think what I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, yeah, go ahead. I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's one of the issues I had <clears throat> when I was reading this, is that like I can't physically hear as I'm reading. And so some of the things like I've I've heard speakers talk and you know but I've never heard Robert Zuboff really speak and I wanted to hear a recording of this because um, there were certain parts that I felt I wasn't reading mm -hmm. at a correct speed or giving it that right that right um, deliverance you know through my mind or and I, even when I read it out loud there's something about reading it faster when I'm just reading it in my head but sounding it out my tongue gets all twisted up mm -hmm. but it was just those kind of things were like, I knew that this was something special and given in such a way that it something I can't really comprehend just reading. And, you know, I've heard my grandpa speak and trying to read it with that kind of tone, it's just, it's hard because my grandpa spoke differently than he did. And so it's just, you know, I'm trying to put a voice to it and it's not like your everyday kind of you know reading in English. Mm -hmm. So the deliverance is something that I would really like to hear. And I don't know if it's out there because I felt like this was recording. I've read these before, but I've never actually like put the effort to look for a recording or anything. Yeah. On that sort. Zuboff was uh Really, really great. He was one of uh, Nora's favorites. Maybe the one she mentions the most, actually. And uh, there's a lot, actually, of his recordings on both at S it's, it's in the Dauenheimer collection, which is both at UAS and um, Sealaski Heritage. Um, and uh, I've actually uh, did a draft transcription and translation about like four hours, five hours of this stuff, which is like. I, worked, I had a pleasure working almost like a year on it, which was amazing. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll look that up, um, and, and I can send that to you. Um, That'd be great. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you just check it out, yeah, he does have a super distinct voice. <laughs> well, we'll get, I, we can listen to Talk uh, tonight. Yeah. And I've got that one. Exactly. That's and I've got YouTube. several other ones. There we go. Um, we can talk about methods and how you can explore the Downhower collection. Uh, I, I think I sent you guys the finding guide. Uh, it would be great for us through the semester to locate as many of these stories as we can and to make them available. Because I think it's, for me, it's, it's sort of I used to do this exercise. There was a poem, poet, poet, poem. <laughs> there was a poem. Uh, called We Real Cool. Right. And so I used to give this to students and I'd say, okay, somebody read this out loud. And, and so they would read it and then, um, 
and then I would play the poet reading it, right? Of course it's going to sound different, right? And just the, and that's just English. So now we've got Clinkit, which we're all sort of babies to the language. Yeah. And then we're going to have like all these verb mode, all the stuff that we don't know how to do yet. And then you also have the delivery of a story, which is a big deal. Um, and so I think it, it, it's a difference. And one of the things I think that really helps you uh, in terms of your intonation and, and your ability to produce language is to read these stories. Uh, my, my suggestion is to maybe go ahead and read the English, read it to yourself, and go through and read the Clinkit out loud. Yeah, many, and, many, many times. That's when get it. And then go back and listen to the speaker telling you. Yeah. And then read out loud again and try to mimic the things that you remember hearing. And I think this is, this is sort of <coughs> pulling your brain along and saying, OK, brain, let's go. Let's go. We're going into the blanket world. And I think those things really help you. And, and even if there's a whole bunch, because then you don't have to think about the structural stuff that's going on. You're just thinking about the way the rhythm, the way it sounds. And you, you're, you've already got the English content. You know what the content is. I tried to use the finding guide that you sent us. Is it for like Adobe specifically? Because mine like opened up in preview and like I can look at it uh -huh. and I can like select stuff. But when I try to search for anything, it just says no results. What? For anything. Okay. I'll send a word version. If you don't get it, <coughs> uh, we need to take a break and then we'll go to our online folks and we'll come back and we'll actually move into our stories. Uh, yeah, so five minute break. Started with a sore throat, tripping, yeah. like stuck nose, stuck nose. I don't know if it was because I was blowing my nose so much, or just like the kind of sickness in my sinuses or something. But I seriously had like more than 20 bloody noses through the whole thing. You should have gone to the doctor. Yeah, I know. I probably should have. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't want to go spend like five hundred bucks. I'm fine now. Now that it's gone, but it was pretty weird.
This is just called fresh curds. The flanks of cheese is really good. The mac and cheese is the best. Yeah. We had cheese and cheese. Flagship. Costco has the G. Flagship. One classroom down, by the one room, was shut up there. And I was like, fuck this place. Like, no one was in there. And there's one cranky bird dictionary on the back. So I got a message. There's no one here. I showed up here, and then Rosemary and, and Beth were standing up there. And I was like, am I in the wrong class? And it looked like they were waiting for me to leave. I was like, <laughs> setting up the tables. And they were standing there. I was like, Am I sitting in the wrong classroom? And I walk out, I like check the list, I was like, I think I'm fine, but this is weird. So I walk out and check the list too, and then I go to your lap, so I think I'll get out there. <laughs> We're walking into that classroom. <laughs> Everyone sees it, kind of. Really? What's that? I did it today, no one was in there. There's yeah. like a verb dictionary on the whiteboard. Oh. So just, that's yeah. the message. If no one's going to be at class, just take a dictionary. <laughs> What's your verb dictionary? There's a box of them in 109. Someone wanted to dispose of an extra problem. It's a paint board thing. <laughs> yeah, they have the same face when I walk into a classroom. It's not mine, and the class is going to be just like that. And like, the teacher looks at me and smiles, and I'm like, don't look at me. <laughs> How many times has that happened to you? <laughs> like three times. Did you walk into the wrong room? Yeah. Like, everyone looks back. No one's like continually focused and like I'm gonna do this class the whole way without any interruption. Okay, back to business. Uh, who's first? Do session qua. It's like Ida. Ida. I interviewed the town. What's that in the name? Tell us what's going on. Okay. Uh, it's really good to see you guys. I'm in Vancouver. And I've been doing linguistic stuff, and that's pretty shkahadi. So. Uh, yeah, I'm glad to be able to connect to the internets now so I can sit in on this class and really remind myself what I'm doing here because sometimes that can be a challenge. Uh, it's been good so far though. I'm learning a lot of really weird stuff. <laughs> Which I think is good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's I don't know as far as updates what you guys want to know, but I survived my first week of grad school. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Uh. uh um. What uh, uh, Um. Yeah, gay, uh, shkelsnik, ayah, um, 
I, I find every time I read that story, there's just layers and layers. There, there's more to it. It's a, a huge story. And I, I didn't um, um, <coughs> really have a, a problem coming up with questions, but I, I don't know how to uh, really answer them in the language. But I, I guess the thing is just to... Uh, uh, do whatever I can at whatever level I'm at, eh? and I, I think it's time to just start pushing through that and uh, not be so nervous about that. Eh? So, uh, but yeah, just wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, the uh, <coughs> I, I notice uh, Kashichguk uh, and the uh, Tut as well. It's it's the the old wife that's the good one. Is that? Uh, is that <laughs> A clingit uh, thing, or that's a horse a dog. I'll be recorded, so continue your nature. Ah, I'll show it, Sean. Yeah, the first and only wife is the best. <laughs> Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I don't know. Um, when you hear uh, A.P. Johnson um, say to uh, mimic the older, the, the younger wife, I love it. I love this line. Um, Is it <laughs> Couldn't you just spoon some broth on this? Because <laughs> she wasn't getting enough of the food that she wanted. So that's yeah. that led to his peril. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, boy. Uh, I do want to talk, uh, you know, as we... Were s I don't expect us to come up with really super deep literary conversations on your own. I mean, we can engage in those conversations when we get here. But what, I, what I'm hoping for you guys to bring to the table, here are some tools to give us things to talk about in the language. For example, we've got two versions of Natsashane. One of them mentions the island that this may have taken place on. You could look up that island. You can, and we'll look at the ways you can um, do searches within the Thornton text uh, and you could find where that is and then you could find what the English name of that is and then you could go to Google Maps and then you could look it up. So those are some really fun things to do and same with uh, you could do it with that as well. Um, there's on clinkitlanguage.org under the resources audio tab Taka, Duktut, and the first white men are all, all three of those are there. Those are the three that I've been able to find so far. Uh, and the goal is the stuff is already published, put the audio out there to accompany these texts. Um, uh, yeah, so that just content stuff. Uh, um, I, I found it really interesting reading the different stories. I, uh, um, would read it in English and then read it out loud and sing it, or the other way around. Um, but uh, it was pretty difficult even reading the English part, trying to follow what was happening in the story, mm -hmm. um, who was saying what. Um, but I guess it maybe just comes with practice, this, a different oratory tradition. Um, that sneaks away. What story are you looking at? Sorry. Uh, well, it all is just I'm talking about all the stories in general. Yeah, so I think it tends to get pretty loose with the pronouns, right? And, and so, especially if there's multiple, three or four people involved, it can get kind of. If you know the story and if you know how think it works, usually it, it puts one character out there, and this character is doing things. And that will usually be the ush. When we switch to the ush pronoun, this guy that we've been talking about, and that's when you see the ush popping up. And so there might be different times that another character might take over, and now that we're talking about this character. 
And this is generally how Klinkit oratory works, and it can get a little murky. You know, we were working on a, I was working on a translation just the other day, and we're talking about Raven's mother, and like, and it's not like English, and we go, and then Raven, and Klinkit just switches, and all of a sudden you're doing sentences, you're like, Raven's doing this, hold on, and so you got to back up and find the approximate point where the pronoun switched, and it'll use the same third-person pronouns a lot. But sometimes it'll specifically say Ash, and we're talking about the cannibal giant, or it'll be using Ash, and we're talking about the young man. Um, so it does. I think it takes practice, and it takes sort of interpretation and listening and, and in the way that Klinkit is, is sort of conceptually structured and grammatically structured. And you get this with a lot of... Or a story. There's multiple characters, and so, um, and then sometimes as well, the sequence and the way that the storyteller is describing things. It's not always as linear as we might be used to in terms of receiving the story. And these are just things will it continue to explore? Okay, and uh, we have one more with us. I think you joined us. The Clinket Rain. Oh, lucky. I kind of, there was some noise from your thing. You might have to unmute yourself. <coughs> I muted you on the screen because we get some background noise. And when I mute people, I can't unmute them. So I don't know if you want to talk to us. I have a question. I <laughs> he uh, messaged me. Oh, okay. I didn't know what he, I didn't know that he was in our class. Okay, <laughs> uh, if you can figure out how there to, you <laughs> there you are. Oh, yeah. No, I just need. Can you guys see me? Because I can't see you. Let's see how I turn my camera around. Yeah, something. <laughs> Table. Okay, <laughs> Ursatini. So I could see you as myself on the screen. I hope you can see me with you. I could watch the Guggenheim's cheese on your Tresani hot yard. I can't think of his name. Just like the words that they say from Kakaduk, if to each, uh, Kedakshkas Mink, Yashit Kedaka Kik Sadish Tepati, the Yayu Hakawane. We're still going through a lot of a, those hard times that are Kik Sadi. Uh, but it's really great to see the work that you guys are doing here. Um, I didn't know that we could key in on these types of conversations, but Lance described earlier ways that. Uh, students that want to learn then get to learn it quicker by using these written documents here and trying your best to to read what's on the left portion with a person of linguistics or fluent background that can break it down as you try to speak. That's that's my secret right there. I'm going to tell you right now. I've learned all of my stuff from playing it, from being raised around it, having the ear for it. Um, nothing extra special, but uh, one of the funny stories I wanted to share with your group is that when I was growing up, I was so fortunate to have been at a senior center called the Double O here in Sitka at a time when fluent speakers were all around, and I always wondered what my grandma and the others were saying about me because I just didn't quite understand what they were saying. Uh, I always have to ask for an interpretation from my grandma, Emma Duncan, I was like, hey, please just tell me what they're saying, and she would tell me a little bit of pieces, so while I didn't grow up you know, speaking everywhere in the house, it was always around us at dinners, and I think dinners are great conversation pieces, those are the places where you start small things with, uh, uh, you know, foods, how to eat it, how to prepare it, how to process it. 
and your, your comprehension and your understanding of Tlingit life comes with the foods because the foods are from the land and we are the people of the land but not mistaken when we say Anyat Kusani we're really literally those high honored people living clean from the land and so I'm very thankful again that you guys are working on these things and you're referencing some of my ancestors' stories um, I'm sitting here now with my mom she's the Nakhtal of the Kiksadi and she has been my mentor all along, and even though uh, she has dementia and she forgets a lot, it's really frustrating for me because I wish that I would have spent more time around her asking her more questions when she knew these things. But it's never too late just to ask those simple questions from the elders that are still with us. Um, what you're wondering. It's only too late when they're gone. And earlier I just missed, I was really trying to get in there when you were doing the language arts and the curriculum and wanted to propose some ideas that um, I just happened to somehow see this on Facebook that you guys were doing a live cast and I followed it and found out that I can participate. And this is really great. They're trying to find out ways that we can do and conduct more outreach with like Sitka, Ketchikan, Gino, and inland people as well. Um, I think it would be a really great benefit for the class. Um, maybe name some suggestions of people to possibly interview. Um, again, my mom, Anita Wright, her, she's part of a, a big group of a big family called Duncan's Camp, and I recommend that Anita and Johnny and Elder all be documented somehow because they are excited and all you guys are talking about. AP Johnson's rendition of it. And he's my great uncle, and I still remember going to the hospital when AP was there with my mom. And his last words were, it was very vivid, I don't know why I remember it, but he said, Anita, tomorrow, if you see the bucket rolling down the hall, you're going to know that I kicked the bucket. And those were the last words that he said to my mom. So while you guys are sitting here trying to say, hey, look, look at this book, I have a pulsing resource right here next to me named Anita Wright. And they have a really great um, memory to get to share this all with you. So use what's available. Um, I'm so thankful of Lance's work. Yak eh. Hatwuthatsin, Lance. The work. Hatwuthatsin. It really fills my soul. All the work that you do, it goes unstated. And the same thing with all of those students there that are willing to perpetuate all the old ways. Um, but maybe a little bit more outreach. You know, I'll, I'll do the best I can if you guys give me a, a heads up. Um, I have a really good ear and I can I can read Klingit. I just need to be a little bit corrected with how the linguistics in your portion will really help me out. And I think that uh, will benefit each other as well. Try to build this language base. Kadeem uh, Khatiti. That's what my, my mom and I felt. It was like we felt like we were really happy to be a part of this. It, it was a good day for us, and we're living well because of it. Yep. Hey, thank you for your time again. Hayukatangi <laughs> 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 Chadasa a year think a dani car. Yakanas are ya, or two were artsu, think it a puskuku. Gunchish. One of my off the record, even though we're being recorded, philosophies is anybody who wants to come, come on. You know, and especially uh, we've got intermediate clinkets. Uh, there's one person in Sitka who's registered, and I kind of tell people if one person registers and they want to bring seven people, fun. And then if anybody happens to find us and wants to just join in, I'm fine with that. You know, and so and I think we could find ways to continue to 
add to the number of people who are involved in doing what we're doing so that it's not, uh, we try to keep it from being inaccessible. You know, that's a double negative. Is that uh, there's got to be ways to, to, to put it out there and, and to figure out how to, we can keep the lights on, we can, we can fill the seats. We have lots of people who are giving to the, to the cause and we're trying to figure out ways to partner with other groups too to make it free, to make it available, uh, and so that people can join our classes, people can watch our classes. Uh, and so that's why we switched over to some of these platforms to experiment with you know, what's going on here. And UAS is supportive of it, you know, and, and other folks are supportive of the ideas. There's a lot of colleagues who said, yeah, yeah, put, put my work up there, go for it. And to try and really make it accessible. So that's one of the big goals with uh, a lot of the stuff that we're doing. uh, 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 Yes, Ushkit 
sakwa akh shadaq wa shukwa ayatakh a itkh a qaq ye wa yaktwa sukuli da pasaku ni ye jne awal sumik kha khayaq we thak a dat kha tikhat yu khan kwasi saku yashkas ni ya kal just think it are you has to suit and talk a dance discuss me here a car shook what I am to ask to us ago to say I am he are he shot dog a car I need to see a data ya you a car to shot at ya hashuk wash kasni ki aya ha ka ame ame ya ko ni ka ha ni to sa ko ni ta wa na ka aste awa ni ka to wa sa ki de train na sha ta awa ya ya sa ni na ka wa awa ka to ko ti ko ni ka ko ko ni ka ko I had 1906 mark to super come out of the house in our way. They have to take away our tent. You know, which I have a few to forsake. Take a couple of what he read the book. We got the hack of the Akuna. Allah sayat ko yata sika ato esi ko inunod ng kahonite ng isaye nudak ka ay ang yahawuti ka yahawuti ako siya yahat na na iskatag ang kaitingkat yahat ay Ha, I can't. 
זה יכול להיות מה? הפרוט הכי גדול מאוד, כאילו ג'חמר, שחקו מחוץ לזה. היה יחצה ווחן גם אחר, שכגם אחר יכול להנסה, ולא רואה עכשיו וחצי, עכשיו עכשיו וחצי, עכשיו וחצי, עכשיו וחצי. מה שהיה כאן, או סיכוי היה חצייה, שחקו, המקדם פה היה חצייה, אחרון חורך סייעת אחיך, חצייה. ואז מצדק סני, בעצם צומנות בין עניי איתך, וכאילו שקטה מבחורה, בקר סגרנה, היה חבר שוטה דאג, כי הקטע הוא החוט, לא שם קטע הוא החוט, לא מוצחה חום. כשזקף תאי, כי היא אהוב קטע פעם כך תהיו קשה. ואז מצדק סני, מוצחה חום, קטע קטע. עד השבן, כך תרדשת חיאווה וכסיאות, לא תוסחקון כשתי אווה וכסיאות, כבר נכנעו ונראה תרחה חוצקה. אתה רואה תרחה, כבר תרחה, כבר תרחה, תוסחקון חוצקה, תהיה זו. כבר מוצק בכוח אוהב, ותורה סיפר שיהיה חוק בקרות שיצא. It seemed like he was speaking a little faster, hmm. or, or, or the, the recording was going a little faster. Hmm. That felt really fast for Zuba. Yeah, one question. Touch away, yeah. As I was a crew. Oh, I'm going to get it. So, get in. You get on the way. Ah, I'm going to get on the way. Ah, I'm going to get on the way. Ah, I'm going to get on the way. เยาว์เว่ยจับกุฏิเฮสกัดินขสกุฏิดานกวัชอัดดัดเกี่ยวกับคุชเอตาอัชฮัสกุชยัดอัจเวฮัสเคโอเวอิกชุกวะชุกว
Ya, <laughs> 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 
Is Chayegu Ginki Akwa as the Tuasuku? Yeah, Hain State Fair, yeah. Ashas Kushet, yeah. Shinti Hain, Chayegu Ginki, yeah. Gook, gook, yeah. Ach, Yukon, Pla, Yak away. Can you take the away for Ach Tuasuku? We hit a Yagi City. Yeah, God's a year to us to go is a teeny. Yet a guas, yeah, we shut shut a year is a teen, shut yatsku. At Adnach away way, God's wash wait the a year or two would put to the teen has to hit the year. He that hoa get hit duck has put the guards. Has to go at the Haskow, Haskow Satan, a Joey take a dean, a teen, a ya has to hit it that he shan dean shed the hain thing get knock a hit it. A Joey ya. Hosatin do Ada Awa do wash dart. Wash the Katauk eat as the way would do the e sock a he a car do do hand a ya has has to cheat as our tea do in a cowney. Kesha to wash cockade the goody. Chaude hano, chaude hano. Yeah, where are in a cowardly cooties away you do a sock, where pussah one. Kesha Kaina are in a cowardly way saw you for a yeah, has a ye canate, the cate she can't. Yeah, to chalk away to take her away with. Yes, nach the tea, a coach nach the tea. A co had to us to go, Dane would to the cook. I do I yes away you that, I do I yes away you that. Fetch away, ha in Kalashenik to Kashkaw, Dane, I am so coolish. Ah, a co his take shiny day, ah, has overhead. Where <laughs> 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 Anyone else? You just just hear away for a Eat for a hand, chat, chat, and sat it to us. The power she does suck, piss up her heart, spits her head. Each cat sneak, it's a lot of cat. Tissue go at the Mark Jacobs, Mark Jacobs, has to hun kian to cha kudahawa to transatin chair. Peter Simpson, um, that's the way it is. Yeah, where Mark Jacobs, uh, has to win a cow and make. Yes, I eat it. <laughs> 
the hostilities of Kula and Yak died. Um, Yak. Yak. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I wish a shoe where they can call a year tea that a qua to jar the hoa. They sling the they sling the hoa duck car the hoa a swoosh gust. You on the sheetan on a heavy gun a heavy. Yeah, yeah, shardak car. Hush uh <laughs> Chuchaku dach yesu aye has your tea. Hesh has to twa ushku where ya tea at ya ya sing it on the car nach wuku de ya tea at the where Tachunach ya tea where sit where sit a car nach ya uh, ha him would let Ah, you can. Ah, you can. Sit can not would you think? Ah, at two. Ah, has a day, has a day, tea and chalk. Got here. Chaya <laughs> The <laughs> George Jim, a Canadian, where on with who were uh, a yeah, 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 
just the cut a da just take a you click a a da sa etunde tani da teshwa sa poti ya chkashnik a dah kua bashak tua sa ku kwash 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 shak day just take a a in kanik a da sa Drum singer going by. <laughs> 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 Drum singers are bad. One time he said he, he's uh, he was given the name Kakak uh, from the Basket Bay. And he told Clarence Jackson, so Basket Bay means the arch, you know, the Kakak, the arch, the basket. And so he said, he told Clarence Jackson, that he went to uh, Archie Kavanaugh and said, No, my name is Archie too. you other hussies out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm uh, 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 um, like Tesla. Mm -hmm. uh, with dialect? Dialect again? Oh, uh, Dave Sleen is Dave Sleen. Sleen. but he was, he was, he was, uh, clinkifying, um, he was, he was using the anglicized, but yeah. clinkified. Sleen. Yeah, Sleenlish. Carbo cross. Car cross. So. Yeah, two mm. uh, uh, I that mine uh, Yeah, 
Prabha discuss Nirgi. Um, he was a Tiyah Yaketi Etaka. Let's take a look at the game of the crew. Let's take a look Shadak has to shagoon days in the way the Okay. Yeah. 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 Split from, I forget how to say that. Oosh. Akhwa qalakh adi. Qalakh adi dakh asati deshi taan. Asya qalakh adi deshi taan dakh asati. Es khwasaku kwa aya. Es khwasaku uh <laughs> 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 What a shoe away, yes, your duck, yes, your duck, day, scout lady. Just if it a day, yet he yet, uh, where Yashka sneak, uh, do. Do narrative frame took away which Kashniki Shukwanach Ka Ashu is is ka is ka ide Shkautsanik. Okay. Uh, Quest, quest, 
uh, huh. I was kind of surprised. Uh, um, was that uh, line Nas Jin Kat Katlake? Wasadu to move the K way to Saka Kwan. Naskadu Shujin Kat Katlake. As take up who are with Kusaka Kwan. You took Achtundatani one of the way Kusaka Pa. Kusaka Kwan. Yeah. As to some Kuaya, what shed the Hania? Kusaka. Ja, <laughs> A duck. A pa just yet the poor years question to take a Kusak Kwan of Waku. One planes, they pa ye ye a book up cannibal giant, cannibal monster. Pa, the Kusaku, ya cookies, what decide to play Nahaya Akina Kawani for ya. You took what Punk just just she had a hain, she had a hain a quan, just like a quan. Yeah, Aqua Eshaya to the Chai <laughs> 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 Kestasa a dahawe were ehi that Kest as the sai aya our jack to Pusaka dahawe were a jawak nah Keshke at Shishke pa away. I think it has our sukuya. Ka ayausa, our saha, our saha. Keshuku away were Keshuku away. how Khan the Kawani West Kashmik? Well, but Ha after Uch, where that's how you do so. Where Ket, where Ket, 
sort of structure the class, make sure we've got enough time. Uh, so we've got eight stories for next week, and then we've got these other ones, which we'll, we'll probably talk about maybe one more. Um, but I, I like it. We're giving them time and space, and then we'll move through them, and, and we'll figure we've got the whole semester to sort of figure out which ones we want to talk about more, maybe more. We'll figure out a method to, to move through um, and to try and stay in in, in gates. So, uh, this has been fantastic. Cheesh. Figure out that word, Keishu Kelsey Fich, someone who originated from, I'd probably say it then, Kanaka Adi Dach Keishu Kelsey Fich. Oh, okay. But yeah. Okay. When um, I'm hearing some people say talk shuaki and also talk shuaki, oh, I, I was I was flubbing that. I was trying to yeah, I was trying to say it was probably should have been just it should have been decisive. It's one of those things where you're just trying to talk and yeah. things come out. No, yeah, I appreciate all the talking. It's really nice to hear conversation where there's responses. So it's helping me get it more because I. I mean, I'm still learning how to say, how to talk about time. Mm -hmm. So just, I'm learning how to say, like, nask talk shu or he. But I think because it's all in Tling, I, I, I heard it twice, at least, in context, and I got it instead of hearing someone tell me how to say it in English. Right. I think it was Ruth Demmer who told me to say it decisive because it's already passed. Oh, okay. Maybe what? so I should do that then. Maybe I'll fly. <laughs> I heard it either way. I heard it both directions. So I started You're right either way. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and this is good. We should have a little bit of time to reflect on the things that went on. But first, we've got nine more stories to add to the list. Just keep it. Okay. I'll just list them. Same story by Nakeshan. Not the same. Tihua Kad Kaspe Sit Kakana Putin Sit Kakana Yaniki Anushi Jinik Yeshiaku Askak Guski Kwan. So the last three are all very closely related. Basically, the same kind of story being told. Uh, they tend to be fairly short. Uh, I think there's still lots we can do with them, but the longer ones will probably be dominating conversation. If there's, you know, there's, we'll sort of do a recap this week. Where I want to sort of touch on some issues. Uh, we did have like a 30 minute presentation, and we're getting used to doing stuff like this. Uh, but I want to make sure that um, we do have time, and, and I'd recommend taking notes and, and doing things to make sure like if there's things that you feel like well yeah I want to know what that means I don't know what this is I don't know what that is. Make, make those notes and you and I can have conversations outside of class we'll try and save a little bit of reflection period as well the more you do stuff like this as well it just it gets easier it does um, it doesn't get easier if you resist it all the time uh, so any takers on any of those stories there's Yeshnabu and Nakatan, they're each telling the uh, woman who married a bear. Sihua is telling Kat, uh, J.B. Fawcett. Kaspei and Putin are each telling uh, Glacier Bay history. Yaniki, Jinik, and Asuka. <laughs> And everybody has to take one, and then we can start doubling up if we need to. Can I have the first Russians? Is that the whiskey quant? Which version? We do the whole Anushi? semester on Anushi. the woman who read Vera, the history. Uh, yeah. Or Cox. Cox. I mean, they're, we're just going to scratch the surface of some of these, but it might be something that we sort of, we want to make sure there's room at the table for, for all, and yeah, there's still ones we didn't get to. <coughs> Names and so we'll we'll try and do sort of abbreviated conversations about those, uh, and then we'll move forward. And okay, so Actually, I was, I was joking a minute ago, but I actually want to do this. <laughs> um, now it's funny. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, just the, the part where she talked about Kubi. Yeah, well, that's, I think that's a good thing to talk about. Yeah. Origin of these different terms. Chaasa. Chaasa. Which ones have any not been selected yet? Uh, oh wait, who took Nakashan? Okay, hold on. Gene Nick is not, hasn't been as good enough, so. Yeah. Oh, the 
it's more oh, yeah, this is it's cock. Did you mention that's cock? Yep. Okay. So let's see. Yes, now who is on the table? Uh, uh, yes, now who? Uh huh. Right, okay. Fittingly moving to the interior. From the yes, now who? Uh huh. Do you know? Yeah. Uh, let's see, these are both of them. Mushi. And that's all of them, right? Uh, so, Ida and Kayak, there are, I guess I would suggest maybe partnering with someone on some of the longer ones. And even like some of you who have the various Anushi ones, I think. Those are short enough that you should pick another one. That's my executive decision. I like the Suzy Jane story. Okay. Great stories. Very great stories. Okay. Uh, Eda, would you like to join our club and pick stories to work with someone? And really, your goal here is just to come up with a few things to keep us in conversation. And so it doesn't have to be the deepest, most meaningful thing of all time, but you could just like find some pictures, do some other things that you think are going to spark, you know, keep the conversation going. Or you want to pick particular passages for us to look at and talk about more, then you guys can always, there's an email with everybody's email address. So you can hit reply all. And if you've got specific questions that you want to talk about that we end up not getting to, or you want to make sure, hey, next week, let's make sure we touch on this, this and this, feel free to do that. It's not like we've got to only do the three hours and we've got extra time outside. Tons of time. Um, I can partner with on the skin on that if I'm with that to one of them. OK. Yes. And I, OK. I don't know if we're uh, getting any ideas. Uh, yes, no. Okay, so you've got Ikwu, uh, you've got uh, Joe Binger's email address on there if you guys want to partner, come up with some ideas. Uh, anybody else just have a short one? Uh, uh, okay. Are all the stories out of Hashika? Are we doing any of Elizabeth Nyman's stories? These are all out of Hashika. We'll work our way to the to the others, and I'm gonna I'll upload a packet um, in case you wanted to save your book and you want to print that one and make notes, or if you want to read it electronically, you have that option. Uh, okay, anything else? Anything else on your mind? We've all got those assigned. They'll send the list out this evening. Uh, can I also do the uh, this key form? Yeah. Be too short. Okay. Oh, uh, what if I gave you another, a different short one? Yeah. Okay. One not in here? Mm hmm. It's called now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I'll send that to everybody. Right now. So somebody has to say something while I'm trying to focus my brain on these things. Anything else?
Tell us about your uh, presentation coming up. What presentation? I L I S. I'm actually I'm doing two. It's crazy. Um, I'm going to Boulder next week. I might not be here. I, I forget my travel schedule. Um, and that was on Arctic, an Arctic study center that studies climate and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one after that is going to be in uh, New Mexico mm -hmm. next month um, for the uh, this that group that works on endangered languages, which is pretty amazing, you know. Wow. Um, they wanted someone from the north. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, but uh, hey, so what? What? Bless you, Jesse. Thanks. What do you say? Good night, sir. That one you say. The cut dark too long. Where did it come? Where did it come through? Oh, yeah, that's um, why. Cool. <laughs> Johnny's <Johnny's awesome>. um, <laughs> But yeah, next week I'm going to do that. They wanted someone from the Never Alone game. And, you know, I've, been working, I, I've been on that game for, uh, I've, been, I've worked with them since the beginning, basically, when they started as, as a writer. And, I mean, it's amazing how much they actually, uh, how uh, collaborative it was, and how the, there weren't huge fears to take my notes and incorporate my writing and stuff like that in the game, which is a crazy thing for when you imagine something with like a, you know, a, a big budget. Not a, not a huge AAA budget, but like a big budget. Mm -hmm. um, way more money than I've ever, you know, been close to dealing with. Um, but it's been great, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting that I've been working on language revitalization, so I have a thoughts on that. Um, but it's not a new gap, but it's can get, so I'll still be able to connect what I've done with the game, but also thoughts on keeping the language going um, okay. and cultural survival, that kind of thing. My, my talk's going to be on creating indigenous spaces. You know, like a, thinking about the Kadigi, the community house for a new gap, and, um, you know, hot knock and hippie. Our client houses for a thing yet. So. Okay. Uh, Thursday, there's a film here called Language Matters. Uh, and the filmmaker, Bob Holman, will be giving a talk. At some point, he'll be reading poetry with <laughs> Christy Naomi Erickson <laughs> and Keuchne Nora Dauenhauer. Somewhere, sometime this weekend, perhaps. I think it's on Friday. It actually will be a, I, I saw some of emails from you know, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if he's work. Is, does he learn any language or? Who? This guy has doing his thing. Yeah, that's so cool. You know, I, I, I would hope he's actually he's really learning the language. He's, he's been a part of it. It's not just kind of a, a thing that's, um, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so there's, Look at how important the language is, you there's know, a native know. language film series which has been organized by Alice Taff. And so this is the first of, I think, three films. In November, we move into our um, Native American films. Those will be on a night of the week. <laughs> Maybe a Wednesday? No, Saturdays? Yeah, no, Cheerful. I, Genocide films. No, I think, I, think, I think it's a little bit cheerier than. That's, one. that's the Language Matters film series. Yeah. It's and that Thursday. one is Thursday nights, right? Three Thursdays in a row? Mm -hmm. Thursdays, 7 p.m. in the lecture hall. And regardless, like it'd be good if you guys could go and participate in some of the language discussions that occur afterwards. Uh, I'll try and find links for you guys who are online if you want to check out these films as well. Uh, I know they just redid, um, I was at the bookstore the other day, and I saw Edna McLean's Inupiaq Dictionary. Cool. Phenomenal. It's like gigantic. It's got awesome pictures in it. Um, she's fantastic. All right, anything else? Anything else in your mind? Are we going to go to that movie? 
Yeah, well, and class store is optional too. You know, that's for intermediate. Now we've run out of things to say. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing to say. Pretty good session. Good as Chisha Way touched the Katuhan. Kanach Stupa heard the tea. Kaya Aku. Kayuka Tangi. Isa Yech. Kaya Chisha. Ochaya. Thank <laughs> you.